What's up guys, welcome back to Golf Simulator videos. We're back today with the TrackMan Golf Simulator, specifically the TrackMan 4 Golf Launch Monitor connected to the Virtual Golf 2 Golf Simulator software. Now I did show some of these updates recently in our previous TrackMan video. I did have some emails though come in afterwards and we were talking about on-course practice and also some different types of shots and ball physics. And so I thought what a perfect opportunity to dive into those a little bit deeper in this video and then also show off a brand new course that they have Matsumoto Asama Country Club. So this is in Japan, and I think that's one of those things. I've always appreciated the graphics and attention to detail that they have, you know, with the Virtual Golf 2 TrackMan software, but also the fact that, you know, some of us can only play local courses or maybe in the U.S., and this has taken us global. I mean, all over the world to play all these courses, and even if you're going out like I'm going to today to work on your game, it's cool having a totally different perspective of all the different golf courses available in the world. So without further ado, if you guys haven't had a chance to subscribe, please do like the video, comment below, questions, thoughts, anything along those lines. If you're a TrackMan user, make sure you comment below maybe any tips or tricks that you have or maybe even suggestions for TrackMan. I'll make sure I share that with them if I'm speaking to them anytime soon. So let's go ahead and just go over to the computer. I'm actually going to take down my video and that way I can just show you guys the full user interface. So what I did is I selected on course practice. I selected this new course. I did select the evening selection. They have a day selection and then this evening look, which I like because it's kind of higher contrast. The shadows are darker, kind of has a little more colorful sky. It's pretty cool. So, I mean, whatever, you know, works for you, you can change it up. But first thing I would like to do is place a ball. I'm on hole number one. I'm going to go down the lower left and click place ball. We're going to go down in this green side bunker and just click a general area you want to be. Now I really like this part of it, that once you click that general area, you know, it kind of brings that map up large enough to where you can click in the general area, but now once you're there, I can actually go on the main part of the screen where it says tap anywhere to place ball, and I can micro adjust this ball, left or right, or whatever I'm trying to do. And I just really like that it kind of is that two-step, you know, process to where you can make sure it's right where you want it to be, the lie you want it to be, and then you just go over here to the left and click done. And then it, you can see that now I'm close. I have the setting on to automatically turn on that heat map so you can see where the undulation is on the green. And then down in the lower left, you'll see I'm losing 25% power because I'm coming out of the sand, but I still get my spin because I have a good lie out of the sand. And as you know, you can generate a lot of spin out of the sand. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn my camera back on and we're going to demonstrate some different things uh, that were questioned. So I am a fan of seeing my penalty out of the sand. I, you know, I talked to a lot of people and, and it seems like the majority I talked to actually like it as well. I'm sure you're going to get all kinds of different opinions on this. It's just one of those things where obviously sim golf is never going to be the same as real golf. And I would rather be practicing the distances that I know that I need to hit in the sim because outside I can usually look at my lie and most of the time know what you know type of effect it's going to have sure there's going to be variables and you know it might do things that you know i'm not expecting but you know having an unknown shot i want to be penalized and, and, and i i get it people are trying to make it harder but i do like knowing what i'm going to be you know hitting so 25 yard shot the first one i'd like to hit is i'd like to hit a higher launching higher spinning shot i'm going to try to generate more club head speed i'm going to open the face up and get this ball to launch higher and stop and maybe even spin back uh, by the pin. So this is a, a pro, jeez, I didn't plan on executing that well, <laughs> but look at the spin too, 7405. And this is, you know, maybe a standard shot for a lot of people where they like to generate a lot of club head speed, you know, launch the ball up and get it to stop when it hits the green out of the bunker. And then I'm going to show you a totally different approach and we'll show you how that reacts green side. Man, I wish I could hit the shot like that every time. Nice high launch. And then the ball stops. I'm purposely trying to aim a little bit left because I know that if it does land and it has any rollout at all, you know, I'm going to have that left to right that you can see in the, on the mini map. Now, you want the ball just to kind of hop and stop with this high launch, high spin. Look at over 7,000 again. But let's say that that's not your comfortable shot or that's not the play you're trying to do for any reason. Let's try a lower launching, lower spinning shot and see how the ball physics are. 
So I'm going to try to aim maybe a little bit left, have it roll out, and roll left to right towards the pin. Nice low launch. It bounces, it rolls towards the pin. And I'll tell you what, um, what was that spin? Look how low the spin was. That was the plan. Low launch, lower spinning shot. Not as much club head speed, punching it out. I like that play, actually. Oh, I mean, I really like that approach, how that ball is going to react with lower spin. And this was what we were talking about uh, with someone that was uh, potentially looking at TrackMan, that they wanted to know what the green side physics were, you know, with a radar unit. But here's what I want to point out in the video really quick, that it's not just about an RCT ball and having better backspin. When you start shaping shots and things like that, TrackMan uses its dual uh, you know, optical interface as well with its camera. And it's actually using all these different things to actually calculate a spin access indoors. And it does a very good job as long as you have it set up properly. It needs enough light and they give you a diagram to show you how many lumens you should have in your area. But impact is very important and I'm gonna give you a demonstration right now to show you when you're getting the proper impact, how well it works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to change hole in the lower left. You guys can't see it, but you saw it before, change hole. And you know, well, let's go ahead and take the camera down. That way you can just see it all. Now, this is a part that I actually really like about on-course practice. And this was another discussion I had with a different user, is that when you're moving around the course, it's like a live view of everything. So if I go to hole two, that's a drone shot of two, and then three, and then let's say I were to skip ahead down in the lower left, you see those little, uh, you know, it kind of jumps six to 10, 11 to 15. Let's just click the next bubble and look at this like mountain background par three I'm on now. And let's say I want to go ahead and play this hole. That's a good yardage. Uh, let's go ahead and hit select. It goes right from that image and like does this drone preview right down. I think that's really cool. Uh, really cool. Now, whole different aspect of what I'm going to show you in on course practice now. So I'm going to grab uh, 179 yards. Now, here's what's interesting is, is that we're in the mountains and there's elevation. I didn't calculate this, so I may overshoot this a little bit, but that's okay. 15 feet downhill. So normally a six iron for me is about 185 yards or so. So a six iron might go a little long here. So what I would want to do, and I'm not that good at this, I'm going to try to execute. I'm going to take a little off this six and I'm going to try to hit a fade down there. All right. And if the track man is picking up all of its data, like I said, it can actually execute these shaped shots really well. And that's what I wanted to demonstrate for that uh, viewer that was asking. Try to start it left and work right. I just hope I held that off enough. Come on, come around. It is. Oh, man. And that is like exactly what I was trying to do. Um, I mean, look at the spin axis on that. That was a five degree right spin axis. You saw how far left that ball was, and it worked its way almost all the way back to the pin. And I carried that 182. So obviously elevation playing a little bit of effect. Um, but that is just like exactly what I would want to do. Now I'll try to execute this a little more extreme. Ah, it might still work way right, but that was very thin, but see how far right it was working. Um, we'll try one more. You know, this is when you're an amateur like myself and you're trying to execute, you know, shots like this, not the easiest thing in the world, but well, the first one was obviously a very good example. Let's see if we can do another one. <sighs> All right, did I hold it off enough? Come on, go right. Felt like I just released that a little hard. And of course, I got a lot of distance out of it too. Still had a little five degree right, right spin access. I just released, closed the face down a little more than I wanted to versus holding that off. And uh, you can see it, you know, where it landed in five degree right spin access. That was almost really good execution.
I just want one to go a little extreme right so you guys can see it. That should be pretty good. Come around. You can see how far I, I hit that really well. That was like peered on the on the club head. Um, but look at that nine degrees right spin axis. You saw how left that started. And you know, honestly, now that I'm hitting this shot with elevation, I think this is a, a seven iron all day. And I mean, I could maybe even fade a seven iron down there. Um, or you could draw one maybe. I mean, depending on what you're trying to do. I mean, it's a center pin. Um, depends on how you we want the ball to stop and react on the green. But now that I know that I'm getting, uh, you know, these different shots like that, let's, hit, let's go ahead and hit a seven iron. I'm just going to try to hit like a normal seven. I'd love to say I could just hit this little baby fade if I needed to, but. That was hit really well, and it's actually a little baby fade. <laughs> I mean, that might be the club and the shot right there. Um, 7.4 degrees. Uh, you know, worked a little bit to the right. I mean, I think this is the club. The club and the shot. So the elevation is just making a huge difference here. And I forgot about that. I was excited about playing this new course and wasn't paying attention. That was executed well as, as well. Come on, kick a little right for me. Look at that. Getting the seven iron there, no problem. Came right back to the pin. 3.9 degrees. So just a little baby fade, like I was saying. Um, I hope this has been a really good example. Um, you know, I, I have my track man working quite well in uh, the GSV studio. And, you know, I had a lot of people asking about on course practice and we got to show a lot of different things here. So um, if there's something specific you guys want to see, always feel free to reach out, you know, comment below. Um, that's an easy way for me to pick up on some ideas. If it's a little more in-depth conversation like I was having with some other people, you know, feel free to go ahead and shoot me an email. I'll always pin that to the top of the comments. If you're looking to purchase a track, man, happy to connect you with my contacts there. They take excellent care of my viewers. Um, you know, go ahead and shoot me an email. But as always, guys, I appreciate you watching. Stay tuned. There'll be a lot more coming soon.